Good evening, good evening. Hopefully everybody is okay. I'm just making sure everything is coming through. Uh, I put this up late, real late. I try to usually start the live show announcements ahead of time, but I've had some issues going on today that uh, taken up a bunch of my time, as seems to always be the case. Um, we're literally going to talk about most successful resellers um, <clears throat> do something very specifically. We'll get into that in, in just a few minutes here. Um, for those in Patreon, I have a video uh, processing the next part of that one. Uh, the other part, the very last section, it's the three parts, as I said, will be up tomorrow. I'm just going to get it all done and up. Uh, there still may be another one up this weekend. I'm still deciding on that. I do have a couple posts I'll post up in Patreon as well. But the, the video, the second part, will be up tonight. Um, before I go to bed, no matter what, it will be up tonight. It's literally uploading right this moment. So... Um, some things going on uh, sales wise. I've had a lot of people tell me that sales took a dive. From what I see, if your sales are having issues, it's probably the type of items that you're selling is what I would say. Our sales are up and I'll, maybe I even post a, a, a screenshot of um, how much we're up. I think we're up like 70% over last month and like 42% over year over last as of right this morning, like a couple hours ago. Um, <clears throat> sales are coming in if, if you're working your store would be my personal opinion. Again, we've been doing the, the, um, markdowns 28% is what I did. And then we are sending out offers to watchers and I am, I mean, I'm, I'm doing it constantly and I'm constantly getting movement on our store because of that. Um, I mean, it, it's been very constant. Uh, I've talked about another platform hip, which I do. We had uh, the best day I had there, um, 100 and some odd bucks in sales just in one day. It broke the $100 mark for the first time. So very happy with the sales coming in from that. Um, it's a quick instant, 1,000 plus instantly, more than I was getting in before, 15,000 extra a year from doing that, from the way it looks as of right now. And we're out of season. So I, I would love to see what this looks like in season four for the hit platform. <clears throat> Now with the, the topic at hand here, let me just make sure no one says that they can't hear me or anything. Uh, good evening, Amazon Seller 99, good evening. I got Bob right down below it. Ginny, uh, Ginny Loretta, how are you doing? Record crate, hang on, let me hop over to a different screen where I can hopefully see you a little better under the comments. Um, I've got a bunch of stuff opened up here, so. Yeah, and some show up on one screen and some don't show up on the other. So anyway, uh, who else we have in here? Record Crate, good evening. Yeah, love rock and roll. I got my Elvis shirt and I meant to take this off, but I totally forgot to take it off. We had a cold spell um, and it was down in the 50s again. Our small sales are level. <clears throat> Let's with Let me just talk about that for just one second here and Bob with the level. I can set my watch pretty much by how much sales come in on a given day um, when I hammer it. I, it it's, it's, a, it's a level at a certain point that it, it constantly comes in at, at the amount of listings that I would say I have up. I think that's that's the, the best judge and analysis on that. It's the quantity of listings feeding the, the, the beast, eBay the beast, keep adding new items keeps bringing more interest in, doing markdowns, um, even if you only do 5 or 10%, all you're looking to do is get the watchers in. I don't sell as many items from the actual discount itself. I sell them from the offers to watchers. Again, I, I price my stuff high, but I'm still getting more than I expect to get out of it, even doing that. Even with uh, a discount, a markdown in, in sale, of 28% and taking 10 or 15 more percent off, I'm still getting more than I would expect to get bottom end for the item. So I'm, I'm fine with that, with, with how the, the whole scheme works on that. Uh, let's see here, where are we at? Our old dog uh, tax receipts from counties in uh, Indiana worth anything? If you're talking receipts or are you talking about the metal dog tags? Metal dog tags are most definitely worth something. I've got in fact, I probably showed some before, but I got a big, huge bag of old dog tags from like the 40s and 50s. They go extremely well, the dog tags. I couldn't say on a piece of paper receipt. I have never seen one of those sell. <clears throat> I would imagine you'd only want the tag itself. If you have the receipt with the tag, I would say that would add to the value base. We've sold dog tags themselves for a couple hundred bucks for a few of them in the past. 
average dog tag, even if it's newer, is like seven to ten bucks on average, I would gather, for the cheaper ones, you know. Rose Smith, how are you doing? Trina Sirk, how are you doing as well? Santiago Melendez, good evening. Um, earlier the better, though, on those dog tags, too. So if they are dog tags, earlier is always better. Donald's Discoveries, how are you doing, Donald? Andrew Mills. Well, thank you very kindly, uh, Andrew. Regina Pickin, uh, Lomo style, Hoffman. Good evening, good evening, Regina. I discovered uh, Spanky Wilson, it looks like. Uh, what's the name of the... Oh, shoot. I probably don't have it sitting right here. Um, there was a musical group. I can't... I don't want to call out the title of it because it's it's not the best title. Um, Pokey LaForge, that's his name. And it's... I want to F you up. I don't want to say the title, but <clears throat> if you like... I'll put his name in here. I don't usually call out somebody... But I listened to this for like a year or more now. Um, and the title of the song is, I want to, hang on, I know I don't usually do this, but I love music, music like rocks my world, and it runs through my head 24-7, it keeps me going. I probably spelled his last name wrong, but um, if you like <clears throat> bluesy, you got to listen to the song, I guess I'll just say. Um, I love some stuff like that. I've got a video I, I wanted to do on songs and stuff like that. But, I, again, I always run into the copyrights and the dings. And I've got a um, Dropbox. And I've, done, I've had some luck without getting dinged on stuff like that. But I'm not trying to violate any rules or laws. Um, Pokey LaForge, though, I like that kind of stuff. It kind of reminds me of a group called squirrel nut zipper now he's mostly country i don't even know if you'd want to call it country he plays old time guitar um that song though is is like on my top 50 i guess of of this this month i guess you'd say a lot of other stuff too but that's just an oddball one i love the oddball stuff just like uh the bamboo uh, the bamboo baboons uh drinking gasoline if you don't know that song that's another one of those good ones it kind of goes along with the pokey laforge but anyway um hudson resale how are you doing as well are you a collector yes i am a collector Teresa smith been away from ebay a few years jumping back in <clears throat> i've had uh connection with ebay since ebay was ebay uh the very first year there's been times when we didn't do it uh way back in the day we tried it and you know, working full time, and it wasn't wasn't something I thought. Like I could do it on the side too, but um, eBay runs my world these days. Well, not really runs it. Um, eBay is below half of my revenue. Less than half of my revenue, total revenue, comes from eBay combined. Total all of eBay. So just FYI, eBay isn't as much of of a a uh, chunk of our business as it used to be, and it's dwindled more and more as things go by. Um, Timothy. We had a Hallmark store go out of business, and I was able to get a lot of old Hallmark items they had in their stockroom. Market for old Hallmark. It depends on what they are. Um, vintage, I would consider vintage, like pre-70s would be like what you'd want. Uh, characters, things with famous people on it would be the first ones I would put up. Halloween would be right up there, too. Uh, Christmas with Santa Claus is on it. Any of the ornaments they have. Um, like the, the Star Trek ones, uh, the best-selling Hallmark ornaments, I think, are still um, A Christmas Vacation with Chevy Chase. Uh, I want to say that the leg lamp one still goes for some good bucks. I know the RV is still always up in the top. I saw one the other day, but they wanted way too much for it. Um, but the RV, I think, goes for hundreds of dollars still. They fluctuate, and I usually check them just before season or when I get some more in stock. But Hallmark ornaments do very well. The original Star Trek ones, especially the light-up ones. Um, <clears throat> I've always done good on the Hallmark uh, Christmas ornaments. I've never held on to any of those more than a few months, in all honesty. And I don't care if I hold on to anything, truthfully. So <clears throat> I know I always forget this, but if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit that thumbs up. Show some love for the channel. Let's take a break from chat for just a minute here. <coughs> you have to excuse me. I've been back and forth all day. Um, 
I talk to sellers that do into the millions easy quite often. I'm not, this isn't a brag. I'm just telling you, I, I want to give you some info on everybody that I talk to tells me the same thing pretty much on this with, with your business on, on my business. I make, you know, set amount of money. I don't buy anything extra. I don't go out and shop for clothing. I don't, we don't buy anything we don't need at all. If I can fix something, I fix it. Um, <clears throat> and everybody I know that's very successful does that. They reinvest everything else they have back into the business. Or they'll just sit there until a big a big purchase comes along. Many years ago, um, a, a song came out. And, and a line in that song I have never forgot since the very first time I heard it. Big bank, take little bank. Big bank, take little bank. Um, and it's in a song, too, called No Vaseline, if you don't know the song. But um, you got to have the bucks. you got to have the bank. You've got to have the money there so when something happens, you're able to swallow up somebody else or buy this huge, massive lot from somebody who, who who's selling it. For me, having the money in the bank on so many occasions has you know made a windfall for us where we bought some massive lot of stuff that's made us some horrendous amount of money now obviously i haven't always been able to do that here locally i'll give you a true story there was an ad on craigslist for it was like 300 and some odd autographs leonard nimoy was still alive at this point and it was star trek autographs it was all star trek over 300 individually autographed star trek items they wanted a thousand bucks for him i didn't have a thousand bucks you know, I've tried to get it cheaper. There's no way it was. I I saw it. It was a huge investment. It was a horrendous amount of stuff. Some PSA and all works, but I didn't have the money, and and I know who bought it. I know how much they made off of just a couple of the pieces. That was like a ten thousand dollar profit for somebody, from the way it under, way I understand it, um, or more, because they're still making money off. This was years ago too that they purchased it. I don't. I don't. Especially if you've just started off. A lot of people will get some good windfall. They'll sell a couple thousand dollars out of a huge expensive item. They'll go out and blow it and celebrate and relax and enjoy it. Now, there's nothing wrong with relaxing and spending some money, but they didn't save it. You don't save it. They're, they're not reinvesting it. So when something comes up, you've got to be able to, you know, be able to uh, purchase it. And a lot of people, that that's a big issue for them. They don't have the funds to do it. They're, they're, not reinvesting it they're not setting it aside if you don't need something don't buy it now that's not the central point of the conversation here but this is something that that's always brought up if you go to goodwills and thrift stores around here true this is true you'll see people with bmws mercedes going to those same goodwill stores and they buy higher end clothing and stuff it's not a junker, a clunker, older car. They're newer ones. They're not like, you know, cheaper, low-end models or anything else like that. Higher-end, high-class models and the whole works of stuff like that. And, and that's the type of people uh, that do that. They'll, they'll save all their money. They may buy one car. They may have a decent house, but they don't spend anything else. Everything else is reinvested. And, and in my opinion, if you don't need it, don't spend the money. But on to the, the basic topic here. Now... A lot of people, and uh, this reason this is the topic is today is because somebody I know, their laptop broke, <clears throat> and they're a reseller. They rely on that laptop to make them money. Now, they've done some things. They went on vacation. They did some other things. Now, again, we've talked about it. I told them I'd, I'd talk about this. No names. I'm not going to call out the person, but, you know, thank you for letting me use it. But the, the point of this is they tried to not worry about the one and only piece of machinery that they have that can effectively get them to to their business i know you can use a phone in that but for most people like me if you have volume you, you just can't do the same things it, it's a limited feature the app on the phone on apple version or on the android version so i, I could never successfully run my business it would be a nightmare trying to do bulk shipping and all the other stuff that i would have to do off of a phone for me anyway I know there's a lot of people who are, are fine with it and, and don't have the issue with it, but <clears throat> um, hang on one second here. Uh, but the point is that once their computer was down, first off, they didn't save any extra money, so they did not have enough money for the $600 plus to fix their $2,000 laptop. So, you know, they don't have the money to fix it. They don't have any way to list. 
because again they could list the item here item there but <clears throat> they use the digital camera so they're not up on the phone the phone's not a great phone they didn't have a backup of of their most important piece of machinery in their business i got laptops everywhere i don't i would never <clears throat> risk doing anything in my business without having a backup for it. We'll get to some questions and some comments in just a few minutes here, but I've got a backup of everything. We got multiple DS 5300s for our, our cameras and photographs. I've got two um, D, uh, <clears throat> what's it, DS 510 Epson duplex scanners, two of them. I've got a flatbed uh, that does um, <clears throat> slides and stuff. I've got a slide scanner as well. I've got a regular flatbed that just does one sided scans. Extra, again, I got extra cables. I got backups. I've got a battery backup. Um, my phone runs hotspot if for some reason my phone line's down here. Everything runs is able to run off Wi Fi. So, again, if something does happen and I don't have power, I can run off a battery backup. I can run off of an inverter, run through a car or a generator. So, every part of my business. I can steer it or do it somewhere else. I could take a laptop with me and a small portable printer I have. I could take a scanner with me on vacation and scan and literally sell things that I instantly buy and still have people, multiple people doing it here as well at the very same time. Backups is, is a huge essential thing. If I'm low on tape and I only have... I, when I'm down to 12, 12 rolls of tape, I order another case or two cases every single time. When I'm down to 1,000 to 1,500 labels for shipping labels, I order another case of four or 5,000 minimum every single time. Um, printer paper, when I'm down to three reams, reams, I order another case of it. Everything that I do, I keep track of. And it's you're not just... A one, you know, um, a one activity person when you're running a business. Everything that you do, you've got to keep an eye on. In back stock, just like the items that you were selling, counts for the boxes that I have. If I get low on a certain set of boxes, I'm worried about getting them ahead of time. I have never run out of a single solitary supply because of that. I've never had an issue where I didn't have enough of this, enough of that. I didn't have tubes. I didn't have mailing boxes of any specific size. I may not take inventory of all of my items for sale, but I do sure as heck take inventory of all, all of my supplies, SD cards, cords, cables, patch cords, microphone pieces. I have a couple Yeti microphones. So if one Yeti breaks, I have another one. I've got boom arms that are extra. Um, literally everything that I do, my, my cam stands, I have four of those now so I can mount and people can take pictures in different spots. Not only having extras of thumb, and again, if you don't have the money, it's a different story, but reinvesting into your business is, in my opinion, the most important aspect of running a business, sticking it all back into there. Now, we've been, what's this, our 11th, almost 12th year full-time as a reseller. We still don't do anything extravagant. I still don't worry about anything else. Obviously, it took us time to get to any good point to have a bunch of revenue coming in, but <clears throat> I could do whatever I wanted to pretty much again, I don't care about buying million dollar houses and stuff like that. But I mean, I, I don't spend the money. And I think at this point, I, I personally wouldn't recommend anybody spending the extra money. Don't worry about the vacation if, if you know, you don't need to. Don't spend the extra money. We don't know what could happen. Business is essential. And again, big bank take little, little bank. And that's a truthful statement because like the, the Star Trek autographs, I missed out on a horrendously good deal. And that was the last time I did that. We we never we, we literally cut our expenses right after that happened. We we figured out, you know, put this money here, put that money there. I've got a bank account that just is for purchasing. That's all that it is for. You put money in there, it just sits there, and that's what it's for. So anytime I'm out there, if I run into some massive collection, but it's a ton of money, I'm able to do it. And again, I know everybody's not gonna have that. I'm not telling you to, you know, everybody has to have five grand to buy some purchase in front of you or 10,000 or it's it's not the point of the money amount it's the point of the process save your money <clears throat> a lot of people again when they get a little bit of money in they spend it too quickly they don't manage it you've got to be able to manage your money from a business standpoint if if you're running the business and it's paying all your bills every dime whether it's personal or business you should be watching across the board it's it's just a given and every single successful person that i know 
does all of that. Every single one that I can think of. I, maybe I'm missing one or I didn't ask one of them one specific on that, but I, I think every one that I asked was yes on all those aspects, every one that I specifically asked them. And, and again, you, you don't have to be rich. You don't have to, you know, be a millionaire or something. That's not the point. The point is the, the process. Think like like other people do. Think like some of the millionaires do. A lot of the people that I know that sell into the millions, again, that doesn't mean they're making a million dollars a year. That means their sales are at a million dollars. I got a million dollars in inventory just on the one store I share with you. So <clears throat> don't the number doesn't mean anything. It, it's just the aspect of it. The folks that I know are humble. They don't own some fancy house. They don't care about any of that. They're fully invested into their business and everything goes back into that business to grow it. I don't also know anybody who got to those million marks in sales or even got to a million in revenue who just spent the money. The, everybody I know that built up like I have built up a million in, in inventory just on one store. Again, you know I'm on other sites. I've shown some before, but the everybody that I know has reinvested it all. Everything they do is about getting that to the highest level they can. My goal is to have five million in inventory in the next three years. That's my my goal, and I would love to be able to hit that goal just in the one store. I've I've again, as I said, uh, backup on everything is important. Having even if you don't have a backup, knowing that you can go down to your local library and print anything you need to would be a big plus for many people. If you can't afford a printer, you can easily go down to the library here, and for a quarter sheet, again. It, more expensive than doing it on your own, but everybody should be able to afford a quarter to print 10 labels or whatever. You can take your own paper in there to print labels. I've already done that in the past, just on a, a whim when we had a power outage from a storm through here. Um, anyway, the, the point of it is that, you know, back up on everything. It doesn't mean you have to own everything. It just means that you have to have somewhere, some way, some shape, some form to keep your business running when something happens. Again, the laptop issue. Without a laptop, this person, again, I gave them some opportunities, some ideas. They they did go down to the library. That's why I brought that up. But um, they hadn't a clue you go down the library and, and still can, you know, finish your business off. You run some risks. Somebody could see it. You forget to log out or something. You know, you got to be careful and all that. But the, the, the point of it is a backup. It, again, it doesn't mean that you have to have a ton of money for every aspect of it. But don't don't blow it. Don't be stupid with it. Just because you got some money in or you, you got a big plus... A lot of people got the uh, the stimulus or the the pandemic checks out there. Most of the people that I talk to, I talk to regularly, who did get those checks, reinvested it. They spent it on merchandise to sell. <clears throat> so instead of getting fourteen hundred or whatever they got um, per person, they were able to flip it to a couple thousand dollars. So th that's the point. Again, I, I don't any windfall I get, I pretend it didn't happen. You know, everything goes into the bank. Everything. And, and just like the taxes, the year-end taxes, again, if you haven't filed your taxes yet, you've got to the 15th of this month to do it. So just FYI, but because um, they did delay it by a month if you didn't know that. Um, but again, like taxes, a lot of people don't set money aside. They don't think about that. And if you're doing this and it's you're not doing it legally wise, at some point, you you're probably going to get get a letter in the mail. I would gather, in my opinion, because there's all it's all tied tied in a record. eBay tracks everything. The post office is a federal entity, and they have access to what you're sending out. They can tell if you're lying about volume and all kinds of stuff. They know it was sold on a site. Yeah, they can't tell your the percentage of profit, but they're some of them aren't stupid. We'll say so. No disrespect to anybody there, but anyway. Again, if you're enjoying the conversation, please hit the thumbs up on the, the video here. It does help the feed. Let me hop up and <clears throat> uh, see if I can read the feed. Um, I know Squirrel Nut Zippers. They are from my area. Um, Hell is one of their better songs. <clears throat> in, in the afterlife, uh, there was a video for MTV. In fact, I've got an autographed picture of all of them, actually. We've had it on the wall for years and years. I got it at a hall, even. Had it authenticated, so I know it's them. But Julie AJ's Retro and Vintage, how are you doing? UIC out of hand. Not, I no idea what that is. Charles Lowe, Don, you got your Halloween show and character and show already planned out for this year. Um, no, I do not. Um, <clears throat> we've got some other stuff going on. 
Somebody says it's the 17th. I heard it was the 15th um, from my accountant. I'm just going by what my accountant said, so just FYI. Um, <clears throat> where'd we go? No, I haven't, Charles. Um, I've got some other videos kind of along that line. We've shot a few segments here and a few segments there. You, Again, I, I've, I've got some vision issues, and it's really been putting a hamper on a lot of stuff because certain things I only edit. I don't let anybody, I, like the Joker videos and all that kind of stuff, I edited every one of those myself. Uh, Weevil videos, I edited every single scrap of those myself. <clears throat> and that's part of the holdup. Like my art channel videos, I like to edit those. And I've got hundreds of hours of video that I've probably shot and I haven't, you've, nobody's seen before. But um, <clears throat> I'm working through it. I, I will get something up and I, I will have something for Halloween. There will be something this year. One year I didn't do it, but this year I'm sure I'll, I'll have something coming up. Um, Teresa Smith, thank you. I just retired from answering 911 for 23 years, collected up a bunch of stuff. Backstock, good stuff to sell. A lot of people who are retired do this too. I, I know quite a few personally, so. <clears throat> Ginny, uh, the vacation armaments are just one line that are worth big bucks. There are many more. Yeah, I know there's a bunch of them, but the vacation ones um, were one of the top ones that um, I find quite often. Uh, comparatively, if I had to say, the vacation ones are what I run into more than anything else. Um, that are expensive. I run into the ten, fifteen, twenty dollar ones too, but I've run into a few of the Star Trek not too long ago. <clears throat> yeah, I know, I know uh, the birds and the angel sets too. Yeah, just like the uh, Schwar Schwarkovsky um, star sets, those can go for like a thousand bucks. It's not um, Hallmark or anything, but yeah, Gone with the Wind. I think I even show some of those in one of mine. Yeah. <clears throat> I've seen the mansion, the dress, and all those, too. Yeah, and I can see those rising very quickly, too. Figgy Flips, how are you doing? Uh, I'm in uh, Michigan, Ohio, Indiana area, Great Lakes. Or are you asking somebody else, I guess? Either way, uh, that's, that, that answers it either way. Um... How long have you been doing this? What do you do before reselling? I was a regional manager for a national company, um, handled uh, like 20 some odd stores at one point, 11.2 million. We did it a year in my region back in the day. That was my last <clears throat> full-time job. eBay Addicts, all right, reinvest back into your business. Everything goes back into the business, every single thing. We've got, as I said, we've got toys and some other things going on in the background where we've got some heavy high dollar investments. I've got an animation project that we're into like $5,000 worth of labor invested into as of right now, and it's not even done. So, <clears throat> I mean, I've, I've been working on projects for many years these days. We've got a couple books. My uh, wife's got a kid's book. Well, she's got the second one she's working on now. So, I mean, uh, I invest everything back into this. That's every bit of time, every bit of everything. Uh, again, opportunities out there right now. Hey, Penny, how's Penny Day doing this evening? <clears throat> uh, staff right now is fluctuating. Um, I've got a lot of people in school. This week is finals. So if, if you've been a little slow this week, chances are that's what it is. Finals, it depends, again, where you're at, which state. Finals, is like, rotates depending on where you're located. So when California has finals and all that kind of stuff, usually nationally wise in certain categories things can be slower clothing for for one specific and it's like that every every year you can literally set your calendar by that it may fluctuate by a week or two depending on how their school calendar goes and again this is like things that i do i write stuff like that down so i always know when you know when to expect it when to run sales uh, again I, I just ran some sales if that gives you an idea so i don't i didn't run sales for almost four months before that um, <clears throat> I don't know if I really need to run sales at this point because it's still, it's flowing pretty darn good with that. But, um, we've got some projects. I want to just move, raise the volume of, of sales as a well too. So <clears throat> we've put in a little extra effort, I should say. Um, Jay Spain Green, how are you doing? Linda Wyatt, how are you doing? I work on a business line of credit and pay it off monthly. Whatever works. There's nothing wrong with taking, you know, credit or a loan or anything else like that to 
get merchandise as long as you pay it off. Like um, I've used, we've got a, what's it, a Capital One, I think is one of the ones we use. And all I do use it for is I'll purchase something, I'll let it sit on the card for two weeks, and before it's actually due, I always just pay it off in full. And um, we've had our, you know, they've raised credit ratings. Uh, it, it, it helps out. You know, I never have made a payment, though. You know, I've never, ever once uh, done a payment. Um, <clears throat> again, this goes back to being in good with the bank, I should say. A lot of people don't think that you need to, you know, get a, a your EIN and all this other aspect. You cannot get a, a bank account, a business bank account, without an EIN in this state that I'm aware of. Um, and I, I think it's like that in most states. Once you get that, you can get insurance, your your BOP business owner's policy, and um, <clears throat> uh, like get a letter from the the insurance company, um, a writ. You can do um, like wholesale purchases and do bill ladens where you can get the merchandise before you have to pay for it because the bank guarantees it. <clears throat> there's a there's a big play in that, so you can get merchandise without shelling out a dime in many cases, depending on the deal you can work out with somebody. So, again, that all plays into getting everything situated correctly, getting the EIN, getting the, the bank account, getting insurance, even if it's not for a high amount, just enough so you can say, hey, you know, I've got a letter from the bank. I got a letter from an insurance company. I'd like to get some wholesale from you. What kind of deal can we work out? You know, <clears throat> so it ships uh, 30 day bills due in 30 days. You know, it's basically a line of credit from a wholesaler based on your reputation through your bank. You've got valid EINs or TIN, whichever one. And then, um, you know, obviously you've got insurance to show that if you receive merchandise that you, you know, if it's damaged, lost, it's covered through a writ in the, the insurance policy. And that's how mine works. So just FYI, it covers my inventory and it covers things that are here uh, dollar for dollar. And it includes any uh, Lee or billing fees or anything else like that, too. So, um, again, that's just setting yourself up right, reinvesting everything into it. <clears throat> I took college level classes when I when I was in college just so I would understand how things worked you know I, again you can take classes even if you want to you can take uh, like an accounting class a college level one audit you don't have to go you don't have to apply you don't have to get credit for it you it'll be the exact same everything that a college level class would would be and it would be a college level class you just wouldn't take credit and you can write that off on your business expenses it'd be a deduction you know and in all honesty I make more money these days knowing all these little aspects of you know accounting and in the whole works you know i know how to balance a book beyond belief i know you know math is, is a big help i know i never thought i'd get into all the fractions and decimals and all that kind of stuff as much as i am but you know a percentage point really matters especially with the way ebay does final value fees and all that kind of stuff too so again investing isn't just investing your your money but it's investing your time your your brain power into this so it's the only way i've been successful and again everything i'm talking about here i could probably pr pull on dozens of people onto my channel here and we'd all pretty much agree with that that assessment on what people do they get to a level that have the quantities that 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 fully understand the business that's where everybody that i know that does this understands it to this this extent here um Anyway, uh, I just wanted to call it a thanks, and I don't usually call it out, but I've had a bunch of people comment. Um, Chris from um, Daily Refinement had, uh, he showed my store in a video, and I had a bunch of people call it out, and I don't usually call it out, but thanks to Chris for that, because I had a lot of people reach out to me because they saw my store in there, but uh, thanks, Chris. Um, I have talked to him in the past, so another bigger channel as well. Um, but anyway, let's go back to some comments, some questions here. Um, I think I just got Linda. Hang on, my feed's frozen. Uh, lately, uh, YouTube's been like really, really acting up lately. Hang on one second here. Let me pop back over to another screen. Um, hang on. Yeah, I shipping supplies too. Yeah, the same thing with us. I buy a lot of local uh, shipping items too. I can get them cheaper. It's always cheaper locally here for me to get bubble wrap. I buy end cuts. Boxes, I usually buy a whole pallet or I split or do a skid, which is basically half a pallet, 400 boxes or so. Um, and, of course, eBay now has the larger boxes, so I did order a bunch of their, uh, what are they, 12-inch cubes, I think, are the ones I use the most. Um, and I used up, uh, what did we get, $300 worth of those 12-inch cubes from eBay last round. 
So let's see here. Where are you at? Where are we at? Yeah, Jenny's talking about go to a friend's house. Now, I've been in many situations where there was no friends that had power either because it was a storm and pretty much half the area was out. So again, just have a backup. A friend's house is perfect as long as they have power and stuff like that. Um, but again, I have a battery backup. I can run a laptop for more than a day without having power hooked up to the house. And then I can charge that battery back up with my inverter in my car. So while I'm not using a laptop or something, the battery pack is charging again. So then again, I can still work for 12 hours or more on a laptop without having any power from you know, the network or grid. I can also, again, charge my phone with the same inverter. And I can do Wi-Fi as long as the towers are still still running. So, um, you know, I know a friend who has a satellite uh, laptop, too. So worst case scenario. Um, yeah, I know the Ohio taxes, the state taxes. I heard that, too. Yeah. Um, it's the 17th for taxes. Somebody else is saying there. I actually have uh, the art of being rose. I actually have a, a double vision in an eye. So I've got more than just sitting in front of a computer going on here. Um, I spent a, a long, months, months long issue with it. Um, headaches, uh, eye strains, everything else. I got a pair of glasses with, um, uh, what do you want, a prism in it, but they're, they're worse than the contacts. I was just so disappointed. I got $1,000 in glasses I can't wear. And you can't just take them back, just FYI. Another appointment's already on the way, but um, uh, I got you. New wing, 17th is a business day. That makes sense. Um, Frank Santana, I know you're a fan of music. What's your favorite band? Uh, probably Beastie Boys. I'm in Oklahoma, if that was for me. Uh, hey, Duncan, how are you doing? I'm reading this comment, completely deleted my listing, so I had to contact them and ask them to re uh, retrieve it. Yeah, I've had people tell me when they've killed a listing for no reason or by accident, they were never able to get it back. I don't know if that's true on everybody, but I've had several people tell me that before. Yeah, I've had, my sales are still like, you know, fourth quarter sales right now. I'm not worried at all. Uh, in fact, I'm pretty much up. Um, across the board for the last four months on overall sales versus last fourth quarter. So I'm, I'm not complaining at all. Um, well, thank you, Teresa Smith, as well. Can I sell vintage Avon bottles with product in it? If it's a perfume or anything else, I wouldn't listen. I know a lot of people, I mentioned it in a video that you can't sell perfume that's open. And, and I got a lot of people saying, no, that's not true. That's not true. All you got to do is look at eBay's band and, and um, uh, items you can't list. And it's on there. Anything open, cosmetics, it does include fragrant, uh, fragrances. So either way you look at it, you can't list them. And I know personally people who have been dinged and had their listings pulled down over it. It's a FDA hazard thing, I think, is what it is. It's a federal thing. Um, and I know the people that are listing it are listing it in the new section, but then put half empty and things like that. I've seen them. I've had many, many people say me, send them to me, tell me, look, everybody's listing them. I don't care if everybody lists something. If they're listing it where it can get them dinged or shut down, I'm not going to do it. I don't do anything if it's against the rules. One ding is all it takes to really tank you. Um, usually if you're, you're suspended or something, they could shut off your ability to answer people's emails and all kinds of things. You won't be selling. You can't list anything new. You can only ship out what's going. And in many cases, as I said, if they do suspend you, you may not be able to answer emails at all. So you could lose sales for, for questions. You could have people leave uh, negative feedback because you didn't reply to their comments or their questions. So I'm always very cautious on anything like that. Personally, I don't list anything like that. I don't list glass hardly ever anymore. Um, I don't list any of that kind of stuff, hardly ever, ever, ever. Uh, we've been pretty much, we've condensed into smaller and smaller items, um, stuff that, you know, it's longer tail uh, stuff. Not everything, of course, but, you know, I, I like smalls. Uh, smalls, I can fit a ton of material um, in a small area. Again, I got $100,000 worth of list, list price items in a very small area. Uh, buttons, for example, for one. 
Um, do I shop thrift stores? I haven't been in their thrift store. Well, I'll take that back. I went by one. Um, I help them out occasionally. It's somebody I know. Uh, I do electronics or somebody drops off computer stuff. I'll give them an assessment. Sometimes I buy it straight out from them too, just to give them some money and stuff. But um, no, I don't usually go to thrift stores at all. Uh, everything that I purchase, pretty much everything that I purchase these days is from targeted uh, purchases, targeted hauls, meaning that I'm only going to get specifics. I, I, I figure out where I can get this or get that at, and that's the only place I go. I don't wander around. I don't, I don't randomly drive to thrift stores anymore. Again, nothing wrong with that. I, I did that for years and years. Um, before we went full-time, I did it that's all we did and, and even full-time for the first five or six years um we just drove around and did stuff like that I, I do or don't i haven't been to an antique mall in a while but i i've done antique malls far more than i would ever do a thrift store because i'm i'm better able to find something an antique dealer missed that's worth a lot of money than i am uh, getting lucky enough for some regular person to donate something that's worth a lot of money it just doesn't happen around here um you know, there's only a couple areas of town, and the best thrift store was a Savers in near a ritzier area of town that's since closed down. Um, and I don't like, I vision-wise, I don't drive a lot these days. Um, I'm kind of a hermit, unfortunately, but, um, you know, it is what it is, I should say. Um, well, thank you very kindly, Joe, the Breadman Reseller Channel. Well, very, very glad to hear. A lot of people do send me comments. Again, I do like to help. I get a lot of people telling me I've, I've increased their, their revenue by set amount and things like that. Uh, it, again, it's, it's just learning something. You know, everybody out there who's gaining knowledge, whether it's me or from somebody else, you're, you are hopefully becoming a better reseller, better able to source, better able to price better able to run your business in all honesty i know a lot of people just hop on thinking ebay is just it's just a stupid site i can easily get on there and i'll be running it like a storm in, in days that's a big mistake for some people who've never run their business and i get you know comments when it's usually too late or help you know i didn't ship stuff out quick enough and i'm getting dinged they're going to shut me down and you know again that comes back to doing it the right way i would never risk even a minor slap on the wrist just to make a couple hundred bucks i would never ever do it i don't i don't i'm not the guy and a guy that goes out there and pushes my way to the front and got to get every single thing out there just watch some of my haul videos i leave stuff out that i could have made money on all the time I, i've got i got enough to keep me busy probably for the rest of my life in all honesty me and the wife talk about that a lot um i got so much back stock and it, it's grown and grown and grown. I, I probably would never, ever have to buy anything again if I didn't want to, um, to resell. And I could probably list to my heart's content for the rest of my life, at least 20 plus more years, I would gather. Um, try to list 100,000 items, you know, and I've got hundreds of thousands of items in all honesty. Um, but again, I got nothing into most of it. I've literally paid for pretty much every single thing in my inventory has already been paid for. Every single thing. Uh, again, just because I buy carefully i target i don't i don't waste gas driving places i don't go places that i don't know if i don't think i'm going to get something i'm not going to go there i don't need to i only go to the places where it's a, almost a sure fire thing i've seen pictures i've got a price already almost locked down and stuff like that that's that's how i source every time too um hang on my feed just bounced okay hang on just a second here uh, hang on just a second. I'm sorry. My feed bounced and I want to get back to where I was at. Okay, here we are. I have a Jackery as a backup inverter and converter. I can use that to run my computer and charge it with my car. I am in California. Power goes out if you blow wrong. Yeah, I've seen. I've got friends out in California, actually. Um, Whittier area, if you know where that's at, but... Anyway, I got you there too. I would always honestly recommend having something like that. A bat, a very high-powered battery backup will cost you three, four hundred dollars probably, top end, top line, and those will run a, a laptop for a very long time. And again, you can charge them back off your car with an inverter. I know this seems like crazy stuff, but if you're selling quantity, thousand dollars a day, whatever you're selling, 
you don't want to give up that. You don't want to get any dings. You don't want to get anything because the other person on the line, the other person getting the item doesn't really care in some cases if you're unable to do it because you have no power. That's your problem. I want my item. I hear that kind of stuff. And, and having an extra way to do everything is, is key. Having backups, spending the money wisely that you get, spending it Again, if, if you just started off, you got, had a good week, you made an extra thousand bucks, and you're going to go spend that, and you just started, totally wrong. You're not thinking business. Years into this, um, you're going to be doing this before you want to do anything like that. Uh, again, just, just because you, know, you don't know what's going on, you're new, you're just starting off, you've never run your own business for most people, and, and there's a lot more to this. There's a lot of opportunities to mess up or for your sales to go drastically in the wrong direction or feet anything anything could happen so again have access just like um backing up like on other platforms it's not just backing up all the other stuff we've talked about it's also backing up your individual listings through such as ink frog or whatever you want to use ink frog is easy again i don't get a dime they don't pay me i've never talked to anybody from there um, for 30 bucks, it's a no-brainer for me, 30 bucks a month. If you were able to drop your store level down and save the funds from eBay because of the free, the new free included listings, it's a prime time now to look into spending a few extra bucks to get some way to have your listing somewhere else too. So if something happens on eBay, you still have the ability to not lose years of your life of of like if I lost 30,000 listings, 40,000 listings, that's a lot of time. It's a lot of labor, a lot of investment of, of people here. I would hate to have lost that. So for 30 bucks a month, man, I'm sorry, but that's a perfect example of a backup that everybody should honestly have. You know, anybody out there, whether it's Inkfrog or whoever, I don't care who it is. I'm not trying to say one's better than the other. I just have used Inkfrog and I'm fine with it. So again, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit that like button. I'm at 147 people in house right now. Um, Rusty Shackleford. Hey, ladies. Yes, I just listened to that yesterday, honestly. Um, favorite Beastie Boys album is hard to say because To the Five Burls actually wasn't too bad. That was their last one. Intergalactic. Um, so What You Want one of my favorite songs by them. Their first um, rap album, of course. I do even like some of their, their punk uh, that came out before License to Ill. Uh, just FYI. Um, record credit. I have double vision also. Three years post-attached retina. Both eyes. The, the, I've done the... They did the OCT scan where they scan um, the back of your eye, the retina. They did all that. I had the, the cornea mapped and scanned twice. Um, they did some surface test. I've had my eyes dilated like 25 times, I think I counted. I've had the dye put in them probably about 17 times. I've had machines tested. I've had the, the slit test where um, I've had every test in the book many, many times. I got to go back and deal with it once yet once again. I think I'm on doctor number seven um, and I'm getting no relief still. It's getting... Very depressed this last week, and I didn't get a lot done because of that, because I was banking on on uh, having glasses at least, so when I'm around the house, maybe not great for driving, but uh, anyway, um, I'm literally a hermit, so I'm getting a lot of work done, but I don't feel comfortable out in public as much as I used to because of, uh, I have lost depth perception because of this, so that's the biggest thing, and, and anyway, I don't want to get into that too much more, but that's that's the, the end, end story there. People think I'm winking at them. If you go back and watch some of my videos, I had people criticizing me for winking and blinking too much. My eyes have always had issues, but um, I've got so many floaters in my left eye, sometimes I can't see things because they're floating. It's just, I, my eye took a shock of some sort. No idea. They can't tell me what happened. It's not gotten worse, thank God, but um, it's permanent at this point, it looks like. The 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 prisms doesn't, doesn't correct the 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 double images i've got one solid image and then i've got a, uh i can read the second one too and sometimes they're offset farther on one day it could be real bad and then the very next day it's nowhere near as bad and i, I went on about the dry eye issues and stuff it's not the same every day it's really really frustrating beyond belief if it was just one solid it's always this way they could have done something much easier but if i go into the office and they look at my eyes one day and I didn't have enough drops. I don't know what the deal is, but it, it's it's getting to be 
it, it's getting to be a bit much these days. It's, it's something I would never have hoped to dealt with. And that's part of the reason why, I'll just be honest, I haven't got a lot of videos done in the art channel. Again, I, editing time and all that stuff. There's just a lot of stuff going on. Um, let me pop back down. Um, but I get the winking comment all the time. Or you blink too much. Stop blinking. I hear that all the time. I can't. I have no way to do it. Uh, if perfume is in a spray bottle, would that be considered sealed? If the, most perfume bottles, they, they'd be sealed in a box. You'd have to unturn it, pop it up. There would be a physical plastic seal somewhere, whether it be on the box or the spray bottle itself, from everything I have personally seen in real life. Um, again, we thank you again, Joe the Breadman. How much did you make your first month on eBay? Um, ben, you're going back a long ways. We used to do... Um, 125 listings, I think it was once or twice a month back in those days. And out of those listings, we'd get 1,500, 1,600 once or twice a month. That's back in the days. And I worked 60 plus hours as a general manager back in those days or as assistant when we first started off. Um, and it was always extra money. I, I want to say every single time we were in dire need of money the car broke down didn't have enough money to pay the bills i we didn't make much money back then you know i've got we had kids and you know the wife didn't work because the, we figured by the time we had child support or child care for the two kids and you know it wouldn't have been worth her working where we were at so she stayed home and i worked a lot of hours and and did ebay and she helped with the ebay and all that on the side and stuff so um that was our choice we did that together i mean i'm very happy for making that decision and so was the wife um, our kids were raised by us, um, my wife, um, you know, my kids are good because of the wife. She's, she's done a, a fabulous job, but anyway, um, you know, that's, that, that's what we used to do. Obviously there was fees and stuff out of that 1500 or so out of that. So I don't know, maybe $900, um, extra every cycle. So maybe $1,800 take home at the end of a month. If we did two list cycles of 125 listings, um, all auctions, they would start on Sunday and end on a Sunday back 20 years plus 20 plus years ago. Um, Yahoo auctions is a different story. Uh, we never had that kind of volume, but we did them back then too. Um, are you a collector? Don, I purchased a set of four Japanese, uh, a cheetah woodblock prints in their original presentation folder from the 1950s. Would you separate them as, or sell them as a set? Um, honestly, if they're from the 50s, I might reach out to someone like Heritage on something like that. Again, it depends on the, the amount that was produced. Um, if it's a mass-produced set, that's a different story. It'd probably be eBay. Sometimes they sell better, and I've got some woodblock prints up here right now, actually. In fact, I've got some postcard size ones that aren't postcards, but that are hand-done uh, woodblock prints. I even have a, a woodblock here that they use to make one of them. But um, I would, uh, again, if they're very limited, the artist is very extremely well-known, or it's from a period of the artist that is more well-collected, or his early years when his work was more defining, um, I would probably reach out to Heritage especially if the value is $1,000 or more. Like Sotheby's or Christie's, um, Sotheby's, their minimum requirement used to be 1000 bucks. last time I, I talked to them. Um, so if the item wasn't worth 1000 they would refuse. They wouldn't even tell you. know, They'd tell you, hey, it's not worth 1000 We wouldn't be interested in it. That's how that works. Um, Heritage has, has got a lower, lower value overall, but Heritage does specialty listings for that. And there are... Um, Japanese and uh, uh, Chinese artist specific uh, catalogs that they put out and they'll have like a once a year or quarterly sale. And there's other companies that do that too, but those are the main ones that I, I've dealt with in the past, at least for uh, overall. We use some smaller sites and some of the folks here know them. I've talked about a few. There's one I use sometimes that auctions off train uh, paraphernalia, train buttons and stuff, and it goes for more than eBay. So again, I've talked about we make less than half of our revenue from eBay these days because of places like that. Sometimes a small specific oriented like the there's a there's a very good auction site for buttons which again those in Patreon know about and I've talked about many times and even showed you guys the the guys gals some of the, their listings and auctions their their prices are higher than eBay's. If if I want to get more money, certain items go better at an auction these days. Uh, again, a higher-end auction. And what these high-end auctions do is they'll produce 
a catalog of it. Um, even the catalogs from some very well-known auctions can go for some good money. Uh, the, the Jackie Kennedy, um, I had theirs. It's a bit, it was a big, thick book, and that one sells for like 75 Just a catalog from some of these auctions. But anyway, I know I'm rambling. Let's, let's move back up here. But I would check on value. If you think it's estimated at 1000 I would probably contact um, Heritage Auctions. Um, a, uh, each or what's it? HA.com, I think, is their, their email address or their uh, website. Um, abstract collect. If you do sell that type of item, it needs to be in collectibles, and you can only ship ground with sticker stating that it is flammable, which the sticker are hard to come by. Um, anything that's flammable, that you've got to do way more than that. Um, it, it's got to be marked, as he says, ground, but you've got to have it very specifically marked. It's got to be very specifically sealed. It's got to be protected from heat because we send out... Um, uh, spray cans, spray paint cans, and stuff like that. And you've got to do it very specifically. Um, we ship them in a canister that's metal on the inside, too. Um, and even used perfume is not allowed in collectibles. The only perfume that's allowed, perfume bottles that are allowed in collectibles, are empty, uh, totally empty, dried out perfume bottles. That's what the collectibles category is for. It's not for partially used or anything else like that. The rule of thumb nowhere on eBay can you sell an opened perfume container with some out of it. That's what the rule says. That's what an eBay rep has told me on several different occasions. It's clearly spelled out that way on the uh, agreement page as well as the banned items list. So. In fact, I even included a link to that in some of my other videos right below the video. Um, I've went into that before, too. Um, you don't necessarily have to have... Well, it depends on the flammability t type. I actually took a... Um, uh, Amazon had a class you could take and you could get certified. And it, I actually took that so I could sell pesticides and um, uh, like um, pet things, pet items and stuff was what I was really into. And that's why we made a bunch of money buying a, a pallet before and um, it was selling stuff like that. But anyway, th there's all kinds of rules and stuff. There's a class, a full-fledged class you can take for hazardous stuff that will allow you, it'll give you a permit so you can physically, legally ship things that others may not be able to. Just FYI, I have a friend who has one. Um... Uh, let's see here. I love learning, and you all well, definitely have the best. Well, thank you, Abstract Collect. Um, Girl Hustle, how are you doing? Good evening. I've been through Pittsburgh a few times. It's been a long time. We've got a couple Pittsburgh folks in the house today. Mish D, absolutely true on all aspects, especially the flash and big houses. Uh, funny about the inverse uh, relationships, usually. I'm not a flashy person at all. Um, I, I don't. If I wanted to buy something, I could pretty much buy it. Other than like a house or an expensive car, I wouldn't probably go out and pull money out of the bank for that. But I don't I don't even buy expensive shirts or something. I just don't care. I, I don't care. It doesn't bother me. Um, like some of the Hollister shirts. I My son goes there. I'm there. I just buy some shirts. Um, or whatever shirt I happen to be wearing. I love these kind of shirts. I got a couple of these. They're comfortable. I keep a, a, a low temperature environment because of all the electronics and stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm comfortable. I don't, as long as I'm comfortable, I don't care. I got white version of this exact same shirt. I think I got five of these. I think I literally bought a five pack of these. Um, underneath here, I got my Elvis shirt on, I think too. Yep. I got Elvis on. I got four of these Elvis shirts right now. I just bought another one. Um, I bought three at the same time. I don't care if it's the same shirt. I, I'm, I like what I like and I don't really care what somebody else thinks. I guess that's the point. I don't spend the money. That, that's, that's the bottom end though. Uh... Where are we at? Rusty Shackelford. Harbor Freight was great. 100 watt solar power kit. I just uh, hook it up to my emergency battery to charge up. There you go. I haven't got, I, we haven't went the route of solar. Um, we will one of these days. I'd love to be able to power everything on it and not have to worry and then do satellite, um, you know, with Elon Musk's uh, satellite uh, service going up more and more. They just launched 60 more not too long ago, 60 more satellites. There'll be more opportunities so you can live off the grid more effectively and still run a full-fledged business off the grid would be would be my guess. I'm fine with green power or not. I don't care either way. But, you know, if I had the opportunity, I'd go green just because you can make money off of it. 
if you didn't know with some of the battery charging and again i know a lot of people don't like elon musk i'm not i'm not a per i'm not looking at him as a person i'm looking at the technology i only care about the technology truth i don't care i'm not a worshiper of anybody like that but the, the technology is there he's got some app and again not just him but his app actually works i've seen it before working on a video on here where you your your solar panels create extra energy you use one of the bulk systems and you can sell that back at peak times and there's people that make more than they when they used to spend on electricity so let's say they were spending three hundred dollars a month now with the solar they're getting three hundred dollars back so not only are they not paying anything they're actually able to generate more electricity and by law by law the the power companies have to buy your excess electricity if you didn't know that so i mean there's a lot of people that are catching on to this. A lot of people are, as as solar gets cheaper and cheaper, you know, there's no sense. Uh, if I could cover the whole roof with the with the solar, I'd be f uh, mining my own energy and, and selling it back to, to the, the power grid as well, too. People in Texas made a fortune. There's some, some people who made some big money off of it. Not they weren't skimming, they weren't doing anything wrong. They were paying whatever rate the 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 power company was judging was the rate, and they had some phenomenal amounts for selling all their extra solar energy back to them. So I mean, I, Green Deal or whatever. I'm not saying Green Deal, but you know, you can make money. You can't make money with with normal normal uh, energy generations, at least as a person. You can't sell anything back to them. Solar, you can. And there's people that have been selling solar energy back to them. Geez, for years. The university out here has a huge solar um, array out here, a huge bank of, of, I don't know what all they power, but it's there's a lot of panels out there. It's a huge area um, off campus. And I think they've got two now. I know the zoo out here even powers all the lighting for the parking and all that kind of stuff by solar panels out there. Our, it, zoo's a pretty good zoo here, too. Um, I sold my first vintage postcard. The artist garden in... Argentina, I'm assuming, just listed a few after your uh, video, but now I'll add a lot more. Postcards, if you don't know postcards, they can be hit or miss. Once you got an idea on what's what's good, you know that's that's when it starts to play for you better. Now, I list things that maybe other people may not because I don't just list on, on eBay. Uh, mine automatically immediately go to another site, and then they also are uploaded elsewhere too, so... You know, I'm not just relying on, on that aspect of it. I do have another video in the works that's going to go up here. Maybe I'll put it up tomorrow. I've got three videos that are almost done. One of them is going up tomorrow here on YouTube. Um, there's a whole other way you can sell and sell up to 100 items with no setup, no extra fees, no nothing. I'm nothing I get a commission off or anything else like that, but that's going to be in a video for those folks who want another opportunity to play the field. Um, I'm going to show you something pretty interesting that's done us extremely well in the very short time that I've done it too. Um, but anyway, we're going to maybe that'll be the video for tomorrow. I think that may be very helpful to a lot of folks. Um, Keep an eye out on that one. I'll, I'll show you an option where you only pay if you sell, and you can. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. I'll do that video for tomorrow. And in fact, let me write that one down here. I think that one will be very interesting. I think a lot of people will be surprised to. Most people I've talked to, and I've I've kind of surveyed a few people that I know don't have a clue on what I'm talking about when I was asking around about this. So I'll do that as the video. It'll give you an option where you can create a hundred listings for free. Um, install as many items uh, in those listings as you want. You can delete one and then create another one after it sells. I'll show you. I'll show you. It'll, it'll, be, it'll be interesting for most of you. I think a lot of people will be surprised. I wrote it down. That's tomorrow's video. So if you want something new and interesting that uh, probably no one else has gotten into, tomorrow's video. Pay attention to that one. Um, hang on. Sabotage. Yeah, I'm not as big of a fan as Sabotage, honestly. Um, nothing wrong with the song itself. Um, I'd go more with like Root Down or something like that. Um, geez, there's so many of them. Shadrach, Mishak, and Abed and Go. Um, that whole album is actually pretty good. Uh, hey Ladies, the whole album is actually pretty good. Um, anyway. Well, thank you as well for the support, Teresa. Again, if you haven't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up. I'm almost 160 people in house, and I'm not up to that 100 mark yet on thumbs up. I really like to get to the 100 mark as soon as possible. Um, 
I worked at the O. Not sure what that is. Any eye pressure issues? No, they've done all those tests. I don't know how many times. They've got some laser pressure test. They did glaucoma. I've had every natural test you can have done on an eye done. Every single one. <clears throat> Literally, though, the, the amount of floaties in this eye, it's like there's just junk. They couldn't even do some of the tests there so much. I had to keep looking inside and saw it was it's been a fiasco. Every time I go to the doctor, the last one was the worst. I was at the doctor um, uh, last Friday for four hours for that, not counting the 30 minute drive there either. So it was a five hour ordeal to get some glasses that cost another three hundred dollars that I can't wear. So anyway, that's that was my day working on reselling. I I just bought a heavy Pyrex and sold. Not too heavy foul done. Trina, this is Trina. Hang on, my feed's frozen. Yeah, I don't... Weight-wise. Now, I've sold some pretty heavy things. We've sold um, 35... I sold like 17 feature-length, 35-millimeter, canistered-cased... Uh, four real films. Oh, it was a pallet of these things before we've shipped. I've shipped um, porcelain Ford tractor signs from the 40s that were six feet long in crates that I crated up. I've shipped items that weighed 700 pounds before. We've shipped bulk books, bulk records. But valuable-wise stuff, I'm always hesitant on heavy stuff like glass, like even Pyrex or anything else like that. Um, I know I know personally people that make their living off of selling glass, so don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with it, but when you're maxim trying to maximize space, uh, storage space, um, possibility of damage, destruction and shipping, um, things like that, I, I weigh all those options. And for me, paper can't get broke. Coins, buttons can't get broke. Um, stamps, they, 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 there's not much that can go wrong with any of the items that I sell. My return rate, my damage rate, all that kind of stuff is zero, zilch, zip, pretty much on all the stuff I sell. So it's not necessarily the value. I'd rather sell cheaper items that won't have a return rate, that can store easily, than selling a bunch of higher dollar items that are always risky. I'm always nervous on those riskier sales on losing the item and the money because that could happen most of the time i don't have much into it it's just the principle of the whole idea on those in my book again so you just got to be safe with what you do P pick something that you're comfortable with like i don't mind shipping huge massive size frames and all this in fact i've i've got a, a large one i don't know if i can reach it out this was just wrapped up today this is this is a large frame is what this is glass and all again it's not very big the box itself it's only two or three inches well maybe not even that it's only about an inch on either side thicker than the actual item that's going to get there i have no doubt in my mind i've never had one of those broken if you don't mind packing up something you know big or not that's that's great you can make some good money but for most people heavy electronics and things like that you've got to factor in the, the, the shipping time. A frame like that will take 10 to, say, 15 minutes max to wrap up. You've got to take into account that there, if it's over the combined dimensions, you may have to pay, uh, uh, what's it, the, um, what's the fee called? Uh, oversized fee. I, I don't remember. It used to be like 10 extra bucks or something, I think. Uh, and again, it's only for certain, certain classes of mail as well, too, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Hang on just a second here. I'm selling stuff as we're talking here right now, too. Let me get to some more questions. I know I'm terrible sometimes. I'm getting to them, but I think I'm doing fairly good today. Um, hang on. There goes my feed again. So I can't have both. I can't have the feed good without having it lose stuff. Uh, hang on. I think I'm almost back. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm still working my way back. Okay, hang on just a second here. Chrissy Highlands. I think it's it was because of you I found a monster in my pocket for $0.10 cents and sold it for $102. Well, that would be great. Monster in my pocket are the same basic things. At, the Bluebird makes a lot, a lot of those as the um, uh, Polly Pockets and stuff. So... And I do have an older video on those, too, like um, Mighty Max and all those lines, the horror series, the little pocket compacts and stuff like that. 
James Bragg, I am very new to this. I'm really, I really appreciate your knowledge on a wide range of jobs. Well, thank you very kindly as well, too, for the support and feedback. Paul's Boutique, yeah, Paul's Boutique's not a bad one. Um, most of Intergalactic's pretty good, I have to say. I've listened to every song the Beastie Boys have ever done, every single one. Um, even I've even I even have their uh, instrumental only ones too, where it's just music, no singing. How do I feel about silver plate values? The only silver plate items that I usually mess with are like um, Colonial Sheffield plate or um, like military transportation related. Uh, like uh, a servant. In fact, I've got some USN Navy um, silver plate here right now that came off of a cruiser, a light cruiser from like World War One. Um, all that kind of stuff I buy. If it was on a train, like um, a creamer, a metal silver plated creamer, a hotel creamer, any of the silver plated stuff from hotels I nab up anytime I see them. Um, just like silverware. Iced teaspoons from a a, a restaurant in a hotel, 20, 30 bucks I usually get for most of those. Uh, Woolworths, um, any five and dime that had a, a soda shop in them, the iced teaspoons are the hottest piece out of that whole set. I can always sell an iced teaspoon from a soda shop because people buy them for uh, recreation or uh, as a related soda shop item. Um, and that's like the number one thing. If I see any type of old uh, silver plated silverware, I look through every single one of them. We've sold a ton of USN I've probably sold a hundred plus individual USN silver plated Navy spoons in my day. Maybe even more than that. I've sold um, U.S. Army ones, same thing, st uh, plated ones, of course. I've sold hundreds and hundreds of silver plated items from hotels, all that kind of thing. It's hot. Railroads, the whole works. Uh, let's see here. Joe the bread man, the key to sourcing is having good, uh, successful transactions, getting your business card in those people's uh, hand. Have the money available to buy. Uh, this big purchase quantity usually makes cost per. For, I don't buy pretty much anything anymore. Let's just put it this way as a one off. I don't, I almost never, ever go somewhere and just buy one thing. I'm always buying 50, 60, hundreds, if, if not quantity for me the amount of time i invest in the sourcing sourcing is my least amount of time spent on anything i spend far less time sourcing than anything else i would say uh reselling wise because i just go somewhere and get all my stuff i don't drive around to any specific place i i know where i'm going before i leave the house and i'm only going to a set amount of stops just to get something i've already pre-arranged usually I know everybody can't do that, but that's honestly, for me, has changed my, my reselling life and business around because I'm not confined to random sourcing. And I, I, as much as I love just being surprised by something and random sourcing, if you want to do volume, it doesn't work for me around here because there's just not enough stuff at these random stops. Thrift stores are, are pathetic around here. I haven't been to a Goodwill other than just fun not to make any money in a long time. Um, the last good thrift store haul I got was some old Marks vintage uh, figures maybe two years ago. It was probably the last Goodwill haul I got that was worthwhile. Um, and it was something, it was just the tanks and the Marks, 60s Marks set. I think it was from um, the Desert Fox set maybe or something like that. Uh, Paul's Boutique I'm not familiar with. Uh, Paul's Boutique is... Um, that's their second one. Uh, well, not really true second one because they used to do punk music, the Beastie Boys. Um, anyway, I, I'm a big fan of the Beastie Boys. I was very sad when uh, he passed away, when, when the one passed away. But anyway, uh, Jenny, back in the early days of eBay, almost anything, uh, everything sold in auctions were king. Yep, they, they were definitely king. Um, I actually have a... I got an article going to be out in uh, e-commerce bytes um, on auctions versus um, bin pricing too. So if you're interested in that too, and I literally, I think that's a line out of there that auctions used to be king in one of my in that story that I wrote for them or article. It'll be up this month. I don't remember the date she gave me, but um, uh, anyway, record crate. 
Mentally, eye issues are difficult to deal with. I trust you will get relief and treatment soon. Well, thank you. I haven't. It's been seven months almost, I think, going on with this eye issues. I haven't had any. The contact is like the best thing so far. And, um, and if it's the wrong day of the week, sometimes it's it's so doubled, and then the next day it may be almost no double at all with the lens in, of course. Without the lens, it's always double, but. Um, with the lens and sometimes I can barely tell it's doubled. I'll be able to see like the lights a mile down the street and they're not double the street lights. And then the next day it might be so doubled that one, the, the, the actual lights here, but I'm seeing the second one so far off from a distance. It's just horrendously awful. Or the stop signs are doubled on that one side. It's, it's, it's awful. The lack of the, the loss of, of depth perception keeps me around. I don't like going out as much as I used to. I don't like driving. I don't like doing a lot of things. I don't like being out at night either, all because of this. It's it's really put a hamper on a lot of things around here, but um, it, it is, it is nerve-wracking, let me tell you. I know it's not the end of the world, but... Uh... Yeah, like with eBay, and I've had people tell me eBay is going to do away with auctions and all this stuff. I don't see eBay doing away with auctions as a as a general rule. And I tell you why. If eBay does away with auctions, it'll show that they have no idea on what they're doing. If eBay gets rid of all the, all the auctions on eBay, everybody is going to be sending all their higher dollar stuff to Heritage, Anybody who's grading anything, anybody who's sending anything off to PSA, why would you put it on eBay when you can throw it up as an auction? You'd have to put it up some horrendous price every time, even if it may not go for that, to, to get your top dollar. Most people are going to want to send them to a place where it can be in an open platform and be shown to people for months in advance and get even more money than they would on eBay. Some of the, the high-end sites like Heritage, Christie's, Sotheby's and stuff, again, there's many other ones. Those are just the ones that I personally have dealt with. Um, they, they push the items. Though, though Even with your commission you're paying to these folks, you're making more than you would on eBay. If eBay cuts that off, they're going to lose some of the higher dollar sales on the platform. I, I don't see it. So anybody who's spreading the rumors or anything else like that, I'd be very cautious on listening to that because if you look at it from a, a true business aspect, a business sense, eBay is trying to keep ground that they got going now. They got the high-end watches. They, they would be shooting themselves in the foot. They'd be shooting themselves in the foot over guitars and all the other aspects that they're trying to go in on. So I wouldn't I wouldn't hold much water in, in folks who are going around saying that because of some of the, the things that they're posting and stuff like that. I can't see them totally getting rid of it. Again, I could be wrong. They could be that stupid. They could want to cut off the auctions and, and send all that business to somewhere else. I mean, right? I'm I'm starting to send stuff to other places just because of the opportunities a little better. Why would they cut off and send even more people off the platform? Um, just like if they, they with the coins and stuff. Once I got coins on another site, I probably I, I'm not going to bring those back to eBay again, even though I could list them now. And I like with adult magazines, that may be a different story because I've still been buying them. Um, but again, if there was another site and I had them all listed because eBay cut me off for a year and a half, the ability to sell them, I'm not going to bring them back if I'm already selling them somewhere else. So once eBay cuts something off, they, they there's a percentage of those people that they cut off on coins or something that may have figured something else out that aren't going to come back. eBay has got to have seen that in the numbers on their sales and the figures that they're doing. They've got to be able to see that. So hopefully there's somebody in the financial aspect at eBay that understands all this stuff and isn't doing stupid things and, and piddling away more and more revenue from the site by allowing people to put it somewhere else instead of on eBay. So... Anyway, I thought that was that was a, a no go for them with the auction getting rid of. I just don't see it. Um, yeah, Paul's boutique is pretty pretty good one too. Um, there's a I, everyone on there is a good song. I, I have to say. Um, of course, I do like uh, the first one too. I, I like them all. I, there's, I don't think there's a bad, bad album. I would have to say, just me, just me. I'm a big Beastie Boys fan, though. Uh, let me slide down here. I'm trying not to lose anything. Chris Sword, uh, sorry to bother. I have a question regarding paper items. I found a 1943 Life magazine advertising. 
uh, piece for Snow White and the seven... Ah, I just lost my feed. It just disappeared on me. Hang on. See if I can find wherever that was at. Okay, here we go. Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Any idea where to start looking at value? Just look up the Life magazine itself. Are you saying is is it the whole Life magazine or just an insert? Or are you talking about pages that somebody yanked out of a Life magazine? If it's not the whole Life magazine, I wouldn't list it. It probably won't be worth selling at all. If it's like an add-on extra, uh, it's a complete single piece on its own, then yes, that's a different story. But if it's like somebody yanked out like a section out of Life magazine, it's probably not worth listing at all, in all honesty. You're going to sell it for the whole magazine with that article, and then you'd list the article itself in the title. 1943 Life magazine, Snow White, Seven Dwarfs, full seven-page uh, expose or something in the title. Something like that would sell it. Paul's Boutique is where I got lost. That That's their second al album, third album, technically. Um, uh, I remember people being so niche and killing it. I had an associate who cast replacement parts for Japanese toys. I don't think... Hang on, let me click this and hope it doesn't disappear. We're going to end it off in just a few minutes here. Now let's see if I can get back up and if I lost that one or not. Um, hang on, let me pop back up. I hate the feed on here. I wish there was a, a better option, in all honesty. Um, Japanese soil. I don't think it's like that now. There are people that still do reproductions on toys. And again, we have, we've bought the equipment to do injection molded plastic stuff. And we're having, we've got some of the actual um, molds already shot, done, already milled out. They're CNC milled for us locally. Um, we have a CNC uh, machine itself, but I, we're still going, I haven't had enough time to get it all working down to the T. So a lot of people do uh, recasting of Mark's toys and all that sort of stuff. So re recasting and replacement parts for vintage toys is still extremely hot. Um, some of the parts just aren't available. People recast the guns for Star Wars. They recast all that kind of stuff. So it's still pretty much like that, I would honestly say. Um, I have a Condé Nast Glamour magazine from 1934 up for auction. Is there anything I should do? Um... Check your title. See what's the, who's in it. What's what's on the cover. Anything if you can use the word pinups. Um, find out the artist who did the front cover as well. If it's a painted cover, all of that stuff will help it. Sometimes I put um, like uh, if there's anything travel related or anything else like that. You put some famous names if there's famous people in it. Also, it's got to go all the way to the left of the title too. So um, again, word it correctly because. Like a lot of people look from a phone. A lot of people may not even look at all the words, too. Again, you want everything important to the left of it. Keywords are what sells pretty much anything these days. Um, thank you guys, too, for the comments. Um, I haven't found one of Don's gems yet, but I will keep going. I found another set of George Magazine the other day. Um, I have another issue of that same high-dollar one. It's not nearly as nice, and it has a label on it, but finding the gems, the weird stuff, the rare stuff does happen. Uh, again, if you saw a video not too long ago, I sold that magazine for 1175 bucks for a magazine that other people passed on. The magazine, the person who I got the, the magazines from bought it at an auction for almost nothing, like pennies. And then I paid him a commission and I still paid nothing for it at the end. So it's out there. A lot of people just don't pay enough attention or think newer stuff like that just isn't worth anything. I got a Dragon issue number one, which is the AD&D &D Advanced Dungeons and Dragons magazine. I got the first issue the other day. That's worth like a thousand plus bucks. And no one, no one, it was in an antique mall. No one had a clue what it was. You know, so that's the type of thing that you can find. Um, what stage is your backgrounds for your video? I use OBS for videos. For everything is recorded through OBS other than Weebles and Joker videos. Um, all my specialty videos are shot straight through a Sony Alpha uh, 6400 series camera, um, which is an HD 4000K 
mm, low mid range camera. I think we got two grand into it. Um, something like the lens was a thousand plus and the camera itself without a lens was around a thousand too. Well, it's guy it came with a lens. I'll take that back, but we've got a cinema lens for it. Um, everything is done digitally. Uh, it's not a real set behind me. If you didn't know that, um, I had somebody leave a nasty thing said, why do you cover up the real thing to put something else there? Um, I like a variety. I like freshness. Um, I hate just looking at the shelves all day. If I'm going to edit something, I want some difference. It gets boring, too, when you edit the same. Everybody doesn't want to see the same background day after day after day. Um, and backgrounds that I use are things that I would actually have in real life if I if I had a room. You know, So for me, they're, they, they are more along the lines of me in, in, in real life. So anyway. Um, I'm visiting friends in Worcester, Ohio next month and plan to go to the Hartville Flea Market. Have you ever been? No, I have not, Judy Arnold. Have not. I've had somebody else offer, uh, ask if I wanted to meet them at, at that same one. There's a couple other ones that I've been to, too. I haven't been anywhere in, in since the eye issue, seven months or so. I haven't been anywhere, really. I don't, I'm don't. i a hermit. I don't like going out very much because I'm, I, I don't want to be out of balance. I don't like driving at night and a bunch of other things, too, so... It's pretty much changed every aspect between that and my dietary issues and no sugar. It's it's wreaked havoc on my 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 everyday routines. You know, I've got I'm getting used to it finally. Not the the eye issue, but the food's fine. I'm fine with the food issues. Um, hang on, let's. I don't even know what time it is. I'm just sitting here yapping away. I'll end it in just a couple minutes. We'll kill it off at eight thirty here. Um, Dia Miller, I'm very new to reselling, currently have 100 products listed. I also run two sales per week to increase my sales. What advice can you give me to build my business? List. List everything you can. Constantly list. Far too many people when they first start this out, and this is true, I, I've talked to, God, hundreds of people have told me the same thing throughout the, the years I've been doing YouTube and everything. Everybody gets into uh, sourcing and they look up and they get all excited about finding something worth a couple hundred bucks. And man, oh man, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. And they just keep going and buying stuff, but never get to the point in, of listing it in, in, in a uh, efficient um, quantity enough means to bring the revenue back. And again, this goes right back to the topic of, at hand. Don't spend the extra money. If you're sinking a bunch of money into stuff and not turn around and getting the money back out of it quick enough, you're going to run to a point where you're not going to have any money to buy stuff. And, you know, you may not be able to get it up quick enough to get enough revenue coming back in from it. And, you know, that can shut you down. It can shut you down. And, and, and far too many people don't look at it from from that aspect, from, from my personal standpoint. I hear it all the time. Heard it this week even. You know, they, I've been buying so much good stuff and I haven't been listing as much. And then they tried to rush and... You know, it, like like the like the George magazine I'm talking about. I'm not as excited about finding another one because the price has dropped after the election. When something's hot, it's the time you need to sell it. If if you get it a month or two months late, it's not going to be as, as valuable, or it might may not be worth anything. The market could crash. Or there's a hundred other reasons why, you know, you need to get it out and, and get it moving quickly on stuff like that. What I I've, I've talked to other other people who sell, other people you probably watch. When I get a bunch of stuff in, I usually sell the high stuff and get all my money back immediately. My goal every time I get a purchase in is to always get my money back right away. Just get my money back. And, and usually I can do it with selling one or two items. I get all my money back in. All my fees are paid. So who cares if I list it all right away or not because I'm not sitting on money. I'm not sitting on an investment. Let's put it that way. Sure, it's an investment to some sense, but it's not. my money's not tied up. I already got my money back from selling the immediately quick things. Secondary things that I sell are ones that I can get up a mass quantity. If I can get 50 of something up in an hour versus 20 of something up in that same hour and they have the basically same price price points, I'm going to list every time the one that I can get 50 up in that same time frame. Why would you I'll put the 20 uh, hour or 20 item an hour listing t items up later. I'll set them aside. I've already got them paid for. I'll list enough to get my money back. And then it's let's bomb the category. Let's bomb all the items I can get up 50 in an hour. Those are the ones that are going to go up. I can get more up. I can get more return on the investment. Once it's paid for, it's all gravy. 
this is how you build your 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 store up. You you list the stuff up, you get your money back. You you list. You need to list every single day if you're outsourcing every single day. If if you're sourcing eight hours and this is what you're doing full time. When you get home, you spend two, three, four hours listing a few of those items. Whatever it takes, just list at least five or ten items every single day of the week. You know, don't let them sit there. I've had people tell me if you list every day, you're going to run yourself out of business, which makes no sense whatsoever. You not listing items every day is going to back stuff up. You're not going to have revenue coming in from those items. And again, just like missing them, missing the time frame when something's hot means that because you didn't list it right away, you could lose a couple thousand dollars if it's the, the right item. You could lose hundreds of dollars on other items. When it's hot is the time to sell it. It's just, just a no-brainer. Yep, Nate uh, Renner, it is a fake background. Well, um, it's not a fake background. It's just a picture. But it is one that I would use if uh, if this is a real life. I, I would, wouldn't would have a problem with this being a room in my, my garage or something. Um... Hang on, let's go back down. I see Duncan's got something else. Uh, yes, I have 21 solar panels. They pay me for the extra I generate. And that's in Australia. Um, again, I, I, I'm not a people person as per se, like like Elon Musk. And people say, don't talk about him. He this, he's that. I don't, I'm, I'm thinking of the, the technology. I'm, that's all I could care about. If I was, you know, 20 years old and was single or something, I'd sign up to go to Mars. I mean, just, just me, even if it meant I died there, I, I could live with that. It would be something that would, like a, a bucket list kind of thing, you know? I, I guess that's that's my, my thing. Having seen a Tic Tac, basically, like the video, and I've talked about this before, that Tic Tac video was out years and years ago. I, I know there's something out there. I would I would give my my right leg for a chance to, to see it in close-up person, you know? Anyway, um... Hey, Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter. How you doing, Dom? Another very good friend of the channel. If you haven't checked out Dom, Primetime Treasure Hunter, check his channel out. He's another one of the fellow ones like us. Gives out really good content. Um, old McDonald, Texas, had no solar during the snowstorm as the snow covered them. With a snowstorm, you can uncover... I mean, they use them up here. All they do is... The ones here, all they do is they tilt, the snow falls off, and then you you flip them back over. The battery on those, the snow fell for a certain day. Ba we have them up here. There's more snow up here anywhere else than, than you know down in Texas any day of the week. We run solar here all year round, just to let you know. It, snow has no bearing on it. They're, they're, they're tiltables. And not only that, when there's a solar panel, they're black surfaces, the ice... Again, it depends on the temperature, but 90% of the time, the snow melts as it's coming down. There's only been a couple times where it can be affected. And again, if it's a, a I've looked into this, trust me, I've, I've done a lot of, I've been to the the solar uh, uh, program here. I've actually been to their solar farms they have here at the university. We've got friends who have solar panels in one half of the roof, but the the they turn you can turn them they're all motorized the, at least the good ones here so when it snows they turn them on an angle the snow blows off or they can tilt them sideways and then crank them up later on in the day it, i mean it's not an issue we've used snow forever just like i know people have said well you can't use wind in cold weather do you know there's more uh, wind turbines up in like antarctica than in many other cities that are in warm areas the, it does the temperature doesn't matter at all what matters is that you protect them from the weather you've got to weatherize them just like a snowblower so you know i've i've, I've looked into all that because at one point wherever we were looking for a big place we want it to be able to be solar powered that's that's what we were talking about and again to sell it back that's an investment you can get business deductions you can get tax write-offs the amount of things you can get and have been able to get from from doing something like that, especially if you're up to the grid and you're selling it back to the grid, that's that's it's a money maker. Utilities, the one stock I've always had has been utilities and the power companies. I've always had power company stock, always. My son has some even. So, anyway. Hey Jim, how are you doing? Uh, we're gonna end it off in just a minute here, as I said. Um, I know I always say that, and then I've talked another five minutes past when I said I would talk off. Let's just end it there uh, uh, at this point because I've been rambling for quite some time. Again, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit that thumbs up. I'm almost at 180, well, 185 right now on my end. If you haven't hit the thumbs up, please hit the thumbs up. Again, video will be up tonight in Patreon. It is the second part. It covers 
letters, books, brochures, and buttons that were posted up on community tab. Uh, buttons continues into the next part, which will be up tomorrow. It is actually processing on another laptop as we speak. It has not been uploaded, so I'll upload it in the morning, and it will be available tomorrow as well. So you have the complete, uh, I think the whole video, I think I recorded an hour and 45 minutes. Obviously, some of it wasn't used, but uh, I think the end result is 120 two minutes for the whole thing i think the first video is 34 minutes and the next one's 30 ish something like that anyway that's the one and then as i said i wrote the other video down tomorrow's going to give you a way where you can sell stuff for free list them for free and you can i'll show you i don't want to give too much away but i think this one will be exciting uh for a lot of people out there it's something that i knew about for a little while but as soon as i tried it it's worked immensely well for us it's not ebay it's nothing like that it's it's your own your own links, basic. I'll show you. It'll be something really worth your time, in all honesty. Um, there's only a couple people I've talked about it with, so I promise you, I think a large chunk of people will try and use this if you watch the video tomorrow. Um, I will try to have it up before 5 tomorrow because we do have something going on, a business uh, video chat tomorrow evening with somebody, too. So Anyway, I do appreciate everybody coming on. I hope everybody has a good day. Hopefully you're hamming your eBay store. Now is the time to be sending out the offers to watchers. Do yourself a favor. Do like a 5%, 10% discount. Get those watchers in and then send some offers out. We've been doing that every day and my sales have just been flying. And no exaggeration, flying, flying, flying. Constantly. And not just on eBay and across all the platforms we're doing it. But anyway, I will let everybody go and I hope you all have a good evening.